Praise him. Thank you for tuning into this video. It is your girl, your one and only Alicia coming to you from a woman of divine inspiration, giving you yet another word that the Lord has planted on my heart and in my spirit. Um, I don't know, there is something about following the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. Um, sometimes when the Holy Spirit implants stuff on me, it don't always feel good to have to deliver the message. Um, sometimes when the Lord prophesied to me and I have to give a prophetic word to some people, it don't always feel good because it's like, wow, Lord, okay. But when you are allowing the Lord to use you and you are sold out for the Lord, and you know that there is nothing that you would not do for Christ. Listen, you will allow the Lord to use you. See, one thing that I have learned and discovered is that when God give a prophetic word to you, the Lord says that he will give the increase. And so once we release that word, he'll do the rest. And I used to worry about why. Or how is it going to manifest? How is this going to happen? And Jesus had to deal with me and let me know that that's not my worry. That's not for me to worry about. Just give the word. Provide it. Pour it out. I mean, put the seed out there. Plant the seed and he'll give the increase. So um, to you, I want to say to you all, go ahead. Get your cups. Whatever you have. I ain't going to say whatever because some of you. Mm -mm. Get your um, water. Get your coffee, whatever you have to do to get yourself ready so that we can delve into the presence of the good Lord. I am going to play um, Paul Morton. I do not own the rights to this song, and it's called Let It Rain. While I am waiting for you all to get your word, get your Bible, get your pens, get your paper, get whatever you need to make you comfortable to where you're about to receive this word. Um, if it's in the will of the good Lord. So come on, let's delve into this word. I got a word and a message for you guys um, who are battling, especially we all battle. I'm telling you, it, we are battling. We, everybody is battling in something. So go ahead, get yourself prepared. Let's get it. Let's go into the word of the Lord. And I'm going to let this uh, Let It Rain by Bishop Paul Morton. Senior is not, I do not own the rights to this music. So I'm going to let this play, let it play and uh, dwell in your spirit. He will supply. I believe tonight somebody just wants him to open up the windows of heaven for you. Hallelujah. Let it rain. Send down your blessings, Lord. I just need you to move in this place tonight. I just need you to move in this place tonight. He's doing it right now. Hallelujah. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. <laughs>
all y'all sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for your wonderful words. Lord God, for using music um, to allow people to feel your presence and enter into your presence, Jesus. So my friend, my sister, my brother, whoever you are, this message is for you. This message that God gave me is titled, There's Still Hope for the sinner there is still hope for the sinner and um some of you need to know that the time is now it's not tomorrow it's not next week it's not next year the time is now because we don't have time to waste we don't have no more time to waste living the way that we desire to live. The Lord is saying the time is now. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, Lord, Lord Jesus, I stretch my hands to thee. Meet us right here where we are, Jesus. Touch us. Jesus, you said that if we plant the seed, you will do the increase. And Lord, I'm asking that you would increase our understanding. Guide us along the way. Father, pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Every person under the sound of my voice that is listening to this message that you have given me, God. Father, I pray and I ask, Lord, that this word would not return unto us void. Father, that you would pierce our hearts, Lord God, and change our hearts that will live solely sold out for you father touch us in every way possible lord touch us even when it feels impossible heal the land of your people father i pray that as you use me as an instrument and as a tool to deliver your message the message that you have given me that somebody's life will be changed, transformed, and renewed by the power of your Holy Spirit. Do it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let us know that you care so much about us. And I thank you for everything that you are doing, have done, and are about to do in the name of Jesus. Let there be no backlash of any sort. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. To the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to those of you who have your Bibles, I want you to prepare scripture and go with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. So we're going to focus on Romans chapter 8. And um, I'll give you scripture as we begin to delve into the scripture. But for now, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. My question to you is, is there ever a time when you feel like you have done so much wrong in your life to the point you feel like you would never be forgiven? I'm talking to those of you who are going through times in your life or have done so much wrong in your life. And I was one of them who 
could not understand the purpose that God had for my life. I chose to live my life the way that I wanted to live it. I called myself a child of God, but I was living ungodly. And so I want to say to you or ask you the question, do you ever feel like you want to know God? You just don't know how or even where to start because of the sin that you have committed time after time after time. Or do you ever feel like it's too late for you to change your life because of all of the wrong that you have done or said to people? Well, let me tell you something, my sister and my brother. It is not too late for you to change. The time is now. I clearly heard the Lord say, the time is now. As I began to pray, I began to ask God, Lord, what do you want me to tell your people? And the Lord began to plant on my heart, the time is now. There is hope for the sinner. See, many of us, we get so caught up in sin to the point we become uh, deeply involved in it, right? We forget whose we are. We forget how to turn away because sin, it's so easy to become entrapped in. But it's so hard to get out of. When I heard the Lord say, the time is now. I started to write and I say, God, you know, when the Holy Spirit start to use me, it's like I can't control my hands. I can't control my thoughts. Like they just come from out of nowhere. Scripture starts to come from out of nowhere. And I, I used to. Be like, God, I mean, what's happening here? But now I understand it. And not to go off of what the Lord has planted on me to give to his people. Um, but I, too, lived in sin. And I'm going to say this. When I say I lived in sin, because every day we walk in sin. I lived in sin willingly. I didn't turn away from my sin. I continued to live my life the way that I wanted to. And so until the Lord began to shift. And how many know that when the Lord starts to shift you, the enemy gets even busier. He got to work even harder. And so my thing is, the Lord is saying the time is now. There is no better time than now to give your life to Christ, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God. He is a forgiving God who gives us newfound grace and mercy every single day. We have the chance and the opportunity to change our lives only if we choose to change. See, God gives us free choice. He gives us the choice to make our own decisions. With this being said, God gives us free will. See, in this video, we are going to talk about sin and how to overcome sin through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I'm just going to give you a, a, a disclaimer. This video may be intentionally long or unintentionally long. But when the spirit begins to move, I got to move as the spirit says move. I cannot and I will not move as I see fit. And so <clears throat> there was a time in my life where I felt there was no way out of my sin. And every time I sinned willingly against God, 
I would always feel this conviction. You know how you know right from wrong, you know it's wrong. And you feel like, man, I'm doing something wrong. This just ain't right. And see, sometimes, and I've experienced this, when you fall deep in sin, it's so hard to come up out of it. It's easier to fall in sin than it is to fall out of sin. See, when you are no longer feeling that conviction, that's a sign that you're in too deep. You're in, you, you're in too deep. See, too often we allow Satan to fool us into thinking sin is right because it feels so good in the moment. But when all is said and done, you... And you alone, my sister or my brother, you still have to live with what you have done. So let's talk about this. See, Apostle Paul in the book of Romans in the Bible, he talked about struggling with sin while he was yet still under grace. When we make the choice to sin against God, we make the choice to no longer obey his commands and when we become disobedient to God it forces us or I'm going to say it forces God to have to discipline us God disciplines us because he loves us so much he loves us so much that he extends his grace and his mercy to us each and every single day so that we can get our lives right with him. Think about this for those of us who have kids, right? So those of us who have kids, when our kids, you know, they become disobedient, they become defiant, what do we do? We discipline them. Why? It's not because we don't love them. We discipline them because we love them. We see greatness in them. We know that they know right from wrong. Even though that they have chosen to make the decisions that they have done, which is to be disobedient to your command as a mother or as a father or as a caregiver. So what happens is when that child is no longer following your instructions as that, uh, uh, that parent or that caregiver, you start to step in and get them back on track. By what? Disciplining them. See, Jesus stepped on the scene to provide us with salvation that we will no longer be a slave to sin. In case you have not already learned, sin is enslavement to the enemy. When we sin, it takes God's covering off of us. And slowly what happens is we start to depart from God. When we start to commit sin after sin after sin, it makes it even harder for us to draw closer to God. It, it pulls us away from God which means we're no longer covered by God. Or shall I say that covering that God has placed over us, it starts to pour itself off from over us. Why? Because we are no longer focused on living for God. We're no longer living for God. Instead, we're living for ourselves and we are living for Satan. So let's talk about this thing called sin. You know, one thing that really gets to me is when people say, your sin is much worse than my sin. No, 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 no. Sin is sin, no matter how you look at it. No sin is greater than the other sin. Sin is sin. So people who say, wait a minute, you kill somebody, 
So your sin is much worse than me cussing somebody out. No, sin is just what it is. It's sin. So no matter how you look at it, it's causing you to be disobedient to the Father who is in heaven. Sin causes us to no longer become dependent upon God, but more so dependent upon ourselves. See, when you sin against God, when we sin against God, it pulls us further away from him, right? We no longer have that connection. That's just like if you break distrust in your relationship or a friendship or with your parents or however you want to look at it. It's like we got to start all over, right? We got to try to get where we were at. It's like I didn't broke that trust. And now because I have broken that trust, I have to work just as harder to get your trust back. So when it comes to sin, we're no longer connected to the source. So the more I stray away from God, the harder I have to work to get back to my place and my position. If you have not learned yet, sin is enmity to God. What am I saying? Enmity means the state or feeling of being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. What this is saying is that it means my carnal mind is being hostile towards God. Or shall I say against God? So if you can pull out your word, turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. And we're going to read this. Romans chapter 8. Verses 5 through 8. When you have it, say amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 8. And I'm reading from um, the New Living Translation. And it says, <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 8. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. If your sinful nature controls your mind, there is death. So when we talk about death, my sister and my brother, we're not talking about a physical death. We're not talking about your bodies dying, that God is causing your body to die. No, we're talking about a spiritual death, okay? So it says, but if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, there is life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. I like the New Living Translation because it points out how in money is sin against God. What we have to understand is that sin, when we sin, it causes chaos in our lives. And when we sin, we have to understand that it don't only affect us. It affects those around us. It affects those whom we so-called love. It affects our relationship with Jesus. It affects our relationship with the Father. It affects our whole entire life. Sin, it causes us to lose self-control. 
It causes sickness and disease. It causes stress and torment. It causes distrust. It causes anxiety, depression, and oppression. It causes suicidal thoughts. And some people have committed such sins that they have even went about taking their own lives. It causes us to literally stray away from God. It literally causes a host of so many other things. This is why it is so important to make the right decisions and the right choices by choosing to live righteously. Because we were already born into sin, we must make the choice and the decision to no longer live in sin. We have to get from the point or get to the point to where we understand we cannot serve two masters. See, the word of God says that we are either going to love one and despise the other. Why? Because God is a jealous God. We can't serve God and the world. We can't serve God and live in sin continuously because that's what we choose to do. We don't have time left on this earth to keep living our lives in total and complete sin. Many of us are caught up in the crossfire of sin and we realize, we don't realize the damage it is doing to our souls. We don't realize that, yeah, sin feels good. It does. It feels good in the moment. But at the end of the day, we still have to answer to our Heavenly Father. We have to be hand, we have to each be accounted. Each sin is going to be accounted for at the end of day. At the end of the day. So my challenge to you, my sister and brother, is to give your life to the Lord and turn away from your wicked and evil deeds against the Lord. We have to understand. The Holy Spirit is what is going to free us from sin. Let me tell you something. I remember when I was living in sin. See, I'm going to tell you something. When we live in sin, it causes so much torment. It does. It does. And the enemy, because we know he's so tra uh, crafty and strategic, he do everything that he can, everything that he possibly can to get us where he want us to be. And when we start to live in sin, we start to lose focus on our assignments. We start to lose focus on what God has called us to be and to do. We start to feel like um, we don't, we start to get to the point to where we like, man, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know what my assignment is. That's how the enemy operates. He tries to manipulate our minds and our thoughts to think that when we're sinning that it's okay. It's not okay. I'm sorry. It is not okay. We have to understand, again, the Holy Spirit is what frees us from sin. So when you look at Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, it says, um, if you can grab your Bibles, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. For the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you through Christ Jesus from the power of sin that leads to death. Remember the death is the death of our spirits, of our souls, right? Of our souls. The law of Moses could not save us because of our sinful nature. But God put into effect a different plan to save us. He sent his own son in a human body like ours, except that ours are sinful. Right? Except ours are sinful. God destroys sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the requirement of the law would be fully accomplished for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow 
the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says, those who have the Spirit of Christ living in them. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. The Bible says those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them are not Christians at all. Let's go to that. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. It says, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit. If you have the spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them are not Christians at all. Which means we cannot go about calling ourselves Christians because we are doing good deeds for people. And because we treat people right. That's not the way to salvation. The way to salvation is by, let, let's look at this. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 through 14. Romans chapter 8 verses 9 through 14. We just read verse 9. Let's read verse uh, 10. It says, since Christ lives within you, even though your body will die because of sin, your spirit is alive. Because you have been made right with God, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as he raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal body by the same spirit living within you. Verse 12 says, dear brothers and sisters, my God, you have no obligation whatsoever to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you keep on following it, you will perish. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you turn from it and its evil deeds, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. My Lord. So Alicia, how do I give my life to the Lord? Listen, my sister, brother, I need you to seriously hear me out. Let me tell you something. What the enemy does, he comes in as a distraction. He uses anything or anybody to distract us so that we cannot be saved. Jesus came to give us life. He said that he came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. But see, we have to want to be saved. Hear me out. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one, and hear me when I say this, no one comes to the Father except through Jesus. And that comes from John chapter 14, verse 6. If you want to give your life to Christ and you no longer want to live your life in sin, just as you have been doing, listen, I get it. Sin feels good for the moment. But when all said is done, that conviction that you're feeling on your heart, Guess what? You have to deal with that. See, people wonder why. Uh-oh, sorry. People wonder why there is so much chaos in their lives. People wonder why they're experiencing all of this hurt, this pain, the lack of trust, the trust issues. Because have you ever thought to look at the way that you may be living? Have you ever thought that if I'm living in sin, this is going to cause me to feel a certain way? See, we don't look at that when we're living in sin. 
We look at the feel good moment. We don't look at the fact uh, on all of the chaos that it brings to our lives, deception, lying, cheating, it don't, it, it, stealing. It, we don't look at all of these things that it, that it causes. We don't understand how sin causes sometimes sickness and disease. We don't look at that. We don't look at how sin causes us to be oppressed. We don't look at how sin causes us to lack trust. We don't look at this stuff because we're looking at the feel good moment. So if you ask me, you say, Alicia, how can I turn my life around? I'm going to give you four steps that can help you turn your life around. Number one, you got to first make the conscious decision that you will no longer sin against God. That decision does not come without work. Listen, because people think because I said that I'm not going to sin, I'm just going to stop sin, that that's going to stop it. No. Because one thing that I have discovered, when you live in sin for so long, it's like a bad habit that has to be broken. You have to break that habit. It says that it takes 21 days to create a habit. And sometimes even longer to break that habit. So if you know that you have been living in sin, listen, it ain't going to be easy. It's going to take some hard work and some dedication on your behalf. So make the conscious decision that you will no longer sin against God. Number two, you must have a willingness to turn away from your sin. Which means, again, it's going to require some obedience. For we know that obedience is far greater than sacrifice. So when you obey God, I'm not, that don't mean that it's not going to come without challenge. You're going to experience some ups and downs throughout your times. Just like when you sin it, you experience ups and downs. When you give your life to the Lord, you're still going to experience ups and downs. See, people get it twisted that when they, they start to think that when I give my life to the Lord, that everything is going to be great. Everything is going to feel good. I ain't going to go through nothing. Yes, you are. But it's all about your choices and your decisions that you make. Number three, you have to repent and come clean with God. Ask for forgiveness. Listen, when you repent, the Bible says that when you repent, it means to turn away from, right? That means you're turning away from your sin. If you are one who has committed sins willingly, you have to make the conscious decision that you're no longer going to live like this. You have to be willing to be obedient, to turn away from your sins. You have to repent and come clean with God and ask God for forgiveness. See, God's, God wants us to confess our sins unto him. Yeah, you say God, but God already know. God also says that he wants us to confess our sins to him. He want to hear from us. He want us to come clean to him. Lord, I have sinned against thee. Lord, I have fallen short of your glory. Lord, I have committed this sin and now I need your help. Here's what I've done, Lord, and I don't feel good about it. God want to hear from you. He know what you've been doing, but he also wants you to come to him. Think about it. Just like your kid, if you have uh, kids or you're a caregiver of any sort, when they have done something wrong against you, don't it feel good to hear your kid come to you and say, Hey, listen, I know I was wrong. Or even if you're in a relationship or a friendship, don't it feel good to hear this, that person come to you and say, you know what, I'm sorry. I was wrong. That feels good. So imagine how it feels to God when we come to him and we acknowledge our wrongdoings towards him. The Bible says in chapter uh, uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
See, when we repent, it means that we are turning away from that sin. God is cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Number four, we must live our lives righteously through trust in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Romans 10, chapter 8, says in the NIV version, Salvation that comes from trust in Christ, which is the message we preach, is already within easy reach. In fact, the scripture says, the message is close at hand. It is on our lips and in our hearts. It's already on our lips and in our hearts. So when we confess, uh, according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, heart that God has raised him from the dead you my sister or my brother will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation my sister or my brother if you have been living in sin and if you are tired listen if you feel like you no longer want to live your way this message is for you it's for you the time is now as I said time waits on nobody the time ain't tomorrow it ain't next week it ain't three days from now the time is now we don't have a lot of time to get our lives in order. The Bible says that Jesus is coming back for his church without spot or wrinkle. And my prayer for you today is that you will confess your sins and live your life free of sin. Because there is a judgment that is coming upon the people of God. Especially those of us who are living in sin willingly. So I want to challenge you that if you, my sister or my brother, is one who is in need and you feel like you no longer want to live your life in sin, you want to turn away from that thing that has caused so much chaos in your life, your family, listen, God is waiting on you. God is waiting on you. You're not waiting on him. You're not waiting on God. God was already there. He's been sitting there waiting on you to confess your sins unto him. To give him your heart. And so my brother and my sister. If you are one who are living in sin. And you don't want to live like this no more. I want you to repeat after me. Father God in heaven, I confess my sins unto you. I ask God that you will forgive me of my sin. Help me and guide me to live righteously for you. For I have sinned against you, God. And I ask you, Father, to come into my heart. I confess my sins unto you. I repent for all of my wrongdoings. I repent for everything that I have ever done or said that was not of you, Jesus. And I ask that you will come into my heart. And take full control. Because I trust you. That you would do the work in me. Because you said that greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in this world. And Lord God I surrender my all unto thee. Have thine own way. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
the son of the living God. I give my life unto you right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. My sister and my brother, if you have confessed this, and if you have prayed this prayer, please know and understand, it does not stop there. Listen, see what people don't tell you is that when you give your life to the Lord, it takes hard work. You're gonna receive challenges. You're gonna face challenges. You're gonna face obstacles. But now is the time for you to lean, trust, and depend, depend solely on Jesus. This ain't even about you. You got to turn away from your sin. Turn and walk away from your evil, unwanted deeds. And allow Jesus to enter into your heart. Enter into the heart of man. Listen, God loves you. He wants what's best for you. Just like us as parents, we want what's best for our children. God wants what's best for us. And so my sister or my brother, don't let another day, another second, another minute, another hour, another year go on living in sin. It's not worth it. Because in the end, we all have to give an account for what we have said or done against the Lord. And so I want to challenge you that you will start to read your word because it's not about good deeds being done. It's not about being nice. It's not about that. I want to challenge you to pick up your word, read your word, pray, cry out to the Lord, talk to him, build that relationship with the Lord. And I know some of you probably say, man, it seemed like I take one uh, I take one step forward and then I take 10 steps back. Listen, there is nothing wrong with constantly trying until you get it right. God wants to see that we are, I mean, like we are being effort. I mean, we putting the effort in. He don't want to see us being effortless. We have to put in the effort to live righteously and devoted to Christ. So again, my sister and my brother, I challenge you. I personally challenge you to live your life pleasing unto God, which is our reasonable service. Have that own way. Let Jesus have his own way. Surrender. Surrender. So my sister and my brother, I pray that you give your life to the Lord. Because the time is now. We don't have time. We're wasting time. And Jesus is on his way back. I know you may say, man, they've been saying that for years. Look around you. That's all you got to do. The Bible is literally unfolding right before our very eyes. So get your life right. Get your life right. It ain't worth losing your soul. Spending your eternal life in hell burning in fire for a feel-good moment. Because when we leave this earth, we have to face our maker. We have to face the Lord and give an account for everything that we have done. Get your life together. Now is the time. Now is the time. I pray nothing but blessings upon you. Until we meet again in the next video, I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. And Jesus loves you just as much as I do. God loves you so much that he's giving you another chance to get it right. If you leave today, if you die today, can you truly and honestly say that I lived my life? the way God wanted me to. If this if if you can't say that, it's time for you to get it right. In Jesus name. 
I pray that you get it right. Till we meet again, my sister and my brother, in the next video. Bye for now. Blessings to you.